actually had the reaction of one or two other people. I thought, what on earth is it? I thought I'm a bit like old um, Augustine who said, yeah, everybody thinks they know what time is till they start thinking about it. And then it sort of becomes a bit like a kaleidoscope. You know, you get all the bits in pattern and then it falls down and changes. But I think <coughs> I relate to creative people. That's, they always intrigue me. Um, and I'm also amazed as, at how out of what can be a, an incredibly dull, flat, conformist landscape, something wonderful emerges, meaning people. And I thought particularly the character Cervantes, who created these two characters, was like that. He was in a decaying imperial culture. The British had defeated the Great Armada. The, the, the place was more depressed than around here with a globe or whatever you call it. Um, he was a low-ranking civil servant that spent a fair bit of time in jail for various activities. And, and then he dreams up a book in which you have these two characters, and, and we think of him as tilting at the old windmills. But in actual fact, he, he's a dreamer who was committed to changing the world and not being defeated by the fact his dreams didn't work out that way. He was into justice and righting wrongs and uh, wandering around the landscape. And of course then, I thought, well, sometimes it just happens. And that's what I saw on the back of a Northern Territory, you'll recognise a number plate vehicle. Magic happens. And in a sense, that's a wonderful thing, that creativity does <coughs> sort of happen. There's a thing in Ecclesiastes, that which is far off and deep, very deep, who can find it out? But somehow it just pops up, or pops down, depending on the way you think. Uh, the poet, the Spanish poet who said, you know, true poems do not come from nothing or nobody. They're just floating around in the wind like those floating little seeds. But each generation sees them in different colours. Anyway, I, I like magic happens, or if you prefer to change the bumper, created happens. The problem is, what do you do with it? Do you just put the zero on it and kill it, or do you try to give it a bit of a nurture? <laughs> you know, I thought probably a kindergarten's a better place to go to than an early childhood learning centre. That's just my opinion, because one has that nurture element, and uh, you need seesaw, not that stuff, if you're going to be creative. And sometimes we've got to say, even to ourselves, what are we giving it a squirt of? Uh, do we recognise that creativity? in ourselves, we also may have to realise that the time hasn't come for other people to see it. I mean, Grandpa Erasmus Darwin, Charles' Grandpa, rode around in a coach which had an emblem on it of evolution. But it was a grandchild who became credited for thinking it up and putting it all together. He didn't think it up at all, of course, but he showed how it might work. And sometimes it's just, you live at the wrong time. Bad luck. You live at the wrong place. <laughs> Like some others here, I think Jesus got it right when he said, unless you become like a little child, you won't even get a glimpse of the kingdom. You just don't see it. And I think we've emphasised that tonight, that there's somehow in the child to be able to see the wonderful. I think William Blake had it in uh, to see the world in a grain of sand or eternity in a wildflower. <coughs> but of course, sometimes it's pretty hard to find the door. I thought that you'd like that when I said, no, we're university, latest architecture and galvanised iron. And, and from a long way up, it looks like there's no door at all. But somehow the creative person has the nerve to find the door that takes that person into another place and takes other people as well. But not everybody recognised it. I remember as a child, Mum took us off to see Sir Winston Churchill's paintings. They were everywhere. He was obsessed. He'd go off to Egypt, do sketches, come home and colour them in. There was about that art level too, I thought. But anyway, it was in the Queensland Art Gallery long ago. Well, Ch Churchill said of Picasso, if I saw that guy walking down the street in London, I'd kick him up the backside. He used a uh, worse word than that. But sometimes the creativity is not recognised. You look at that and you think, what on earth is that? When I first saw that painting in reality, it's as big as this screen, but bigger, I cried. I've never had a reaction like that to a painting. But of course, it was Picasso's expression of how Hitler and Franco, in a collusion, decided to try out aerial bombing on a little village to see how it worked. And it was a complete success. Blew just about everybody to bits. And uh, hence you get carpet bombing, Hiroshima and all that. But the picture is really a prophetic protest against the cruelty of war. 
and it could be one of the great paintings of the 20th century, but for some people, of course, they can't see it. But I, I suggest you don't worry about being somebody who's a disturber of the peace or bringing doubt or confusion. Just welcome it in yourself and say, thank God, some people will see it sometimes, even if it's not in our generation.